guys are rolling. Oh my gosh, I'm nervous. Are you? No. <laughs> So it's a guitar that in Sweden, I don't know, 1900s maybe, right around 1900, let's say, um, there was a guitar player who had a guitar and he was in a band with like an orchestra band. And he thought that guitars was never heard, and you couldn't hear it. So he invented this resonator, it's called a resonator, and it made it like twice as loud. Wow. And then people started using it for blues because it has an unusual sound. And um, I mean, this is all just kind of through the top of my head. I don't, I don't know that this is all exactly true, but uh, it was used a lot for blues. And then people started using the slide. Um, because it, it resonates so nicely. But here's just something I wrote. cool sounding guitar. Welcome to my podcast called Your Time. And today we have a most wonderful guest. His name is Pat Lennon. And he is a, a guitarist and vocalist with the band Venice. But he's got so many talents that you wouldn't believe. He's actually also a passionate woodworker and he loves to make mini surfboards. I can't wait for you to see what he does and we're going to learn all about Pat. So welcome Pat. Well thank you. I'm uh, happy to be here. This is really fun. Oh, I haven't I seen know. you in so long too. I but it's, just, know. it's good to see you. Yes Pat and yeah. I lived, well he lived in Venice, California and I lived on the beach in Santa Monica. I just drove by uh, about three or four weeks ago. You did? Yeah by your old house. Oh my uh, gosh. Just north of the pier, yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I mean, we were so lucky because, uh, of course, we had everything. We had the Santa Monica Pier. Yeah, we had We had beautiful beaches back then. Not as crowded, not as uh, impacted by people. It was, we, lived, we grew up in a good time. Yeah, and I, I like Muscle Beach. I was always at Muscle Beach. But you came from... A very famous family. Can a you? Venice family, yeah. Yeah. Um, my older sisters are the Lennon sisters, who I were on them. Lawrence Welk variety show kind of uh, music, dancing, that kind of stuff, singing. Uh, every Saturday night on ABC, they, um, my sisters were on that show for almost 20 years. Uh, they started. The, there's four of them. They started, I think, in 1955. Right. 55 it or 58, was the 50s. Well, something like that. Yeah, early and, 50s. Really. And they worked yeah. for Lawrence Walk till I think 68. 
And uh, they were on TV every Saturday night for that long. I know. I, you, I love them so much. And they also went to my school, St. Monica's. Monica's. And now, uh, it wasn't just you guys in the family. How many kids were in the family? They're all together. There were, tw well, there are 11 now. We had a young sister who passed away very oh, young. Oh, I'm sorry. But, uh, so there are 12 of us. I'm right in the middle, which is, for me, I think very fortunate because I get the best of <laughs> Both worlds there. I had babysitters and I got to babysit too. Um, so, yeah, we had a huge house in Venice. It was really, really fun. All of my brothers and sisters and I, we love each other and have fun and sing. Very musical family. My dad and his brothers were in uh, the Lennon Brothers, the original yes. Lennon Brothers. There was four of them, right? Yeah, and they recorded. They recorded and they did uh, kind of swing music back in the 40s and 50s. Yeah. And um, so we kind of got all of our musical talent from them. Well, I mean, I have been to your house one day with my friend Janine Lennon, your cousin. Yeah. She was my best friend in high school. And I went over to your house, and I don't know if you remember this, but you, your whole family was doing an album. Yes, it was the Lennon sisters and cousins <laughs> sing Dominique. You can still get it, believe it or not. I was 12 years old. And there was a, you were singing a song that I fell in love with. It was called The Preacher and Preacher the Bear. Preacher and the Bear. The Preacher and the Bear. I know all the lyrics. <laughs> I loved, and there were, there was, all of you, 12 or 13 of you were outdoors, just singing away, and the harmony was amazing. Yeah. So you grew up hearing that harmony. Yeah, we, family trips, we'd all just sing in the car. Really? My dad would put on like the radio and if we had like Everly Brothers or something. Yeah, yeah. He'd, he'd have us, half the car sing the high harmony, half sing the low harmony. In the middle, he'd have a switch. And we just learned harmony. We learned it was all fun. And, oh, your and harmony is so incredible. We were just kind of born beautiful. with it too, you know. You were? You have to be, I think, yeah. It's, it's, like, it's like kind of sports talent. You're almost born with a lot of the talent. I mean, you have to work at it, but still. I, I agree. So yeah. much of it is genetic. I mean, yeah. sometimes not, but sometimes yeah. It's, like yes. tandem surfing. Yeah, <laughs> that's genetic. Yeah. <laughs> well, I did. <laughs> well, I loved ballet and I loved acrobats and I did surf uh, at the Santa Monica Pier. So that was perfect. Oh, did you surf before yeah. you were with Pete? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, not very well, but yeah, I did surf. But you did. Well, I knew you knew the ocean from at least body surfing. And oh, yeah. Mat surfing and things Remember like that. Remember we used to have those rubber yeah, mats? Yeah, the rubber mats, yeah. Rubber mats, those were great. Oh, they're really good. They still make them now. They don't have the ropes on them. No? <laughs> <laughs> That's so dangerous. Can yeah. you imagine that now? <laughs> well, uh, they do make those and people ride them. Really? Yeah. They're really cool. I don't, I would love to ride them. I that I just have so many good memories. We're outdoors, and so now we're here in the jets, right? Oh yeah, we got we got our airplane here. <laughs> so, um, getting back to your beautiful family, what was it like being right there in the middle? You said it was pretty good. That's great. I mean, I I was four when the girls started on TV, so I don't remember ever them not like being on TV. Really? You know, which is very strange. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think Janet was eight years old, the youngest, and Didi was 16, I, I believe, something like that. When they were on TV. When they start, yeah, when they started on TV. So, but being in the middle was great because I had, you know, best of both worlds, kind of. Well, then, um, how did you, how did the band Venice that you were a part of began? Okay, so I'm the oldest guy in the band. Um, I used to be in bands with my older brother Danny and, my, and two of my other younger brothers, Billy, well, Billy actually. And we did just, we would do copy tunes, Crosby, Stills and Nash. Um, we wrote a few things. Yeah. We did some of the actual, the, the old Lennon Brothers songs, my dad's You did? Crew. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my dad's, uh, you know, kind of repertoire, and um, and we did it with acoustic guitars, and we'd have a bass player and a drummer, and it was all just in fun. We were called the Hot and Cold Running Springs Band. <laughs> 
So at the same time, my brother Kippy, who at the time was like 14, maybe. Wow. He started singing with Michael. Yes. Who was maybe 15, maybe even younger. And Marky. Yeah. yeah. And they started playing like high school things. And yeah. Started playing rock and roll. So Kip is your brother, but then Kip is Mike the youngest is of a cousin. Our, correct. And the other guy's a cousin, too. And Marky. Marky and Marky, Michael are brothers. What a great voice he has. Wow. Yeah. The Lennon family is just, <laughs> you know, filled with talent. I mean, at the Lennon family concert, there's like 300 people that are all talented. Not 300. Yeah. But anyway, Kip, so Kip and Michael and Marky started a band, Venice. Yeah. And we used to go watch them play and just... I thought how cute, you know, they were yeah. so young, so young and very yeah. talented, but just to me, you know, just kind of cute. And um, I remember I got married in 1980. Yes. They had started doing more and more of their own stuff and getting better and better and yes. getting older. Yeah. And then um, when I got married, I asked them, they had kind of taken a year off of, of playing. They had. Yeah. And... Um, Oh, that's my train of thought. Oh, so I said, could you guys get back together, play at my wedding? And really? they said, yeah, of course we'll do that, as long as you join the band when you come back from your honeymoon. Oh, went, it was a bargain. Oh. I went, ooh. Yeah. I thought, no, I'll never do that. But I said, yes. Yeah. And then about, a, <laughs> two, then about two months after I got home, uh, Michael calls, we're uh, starting rehearsal this uh, week. I went, oh, no. And uh, that's yeah. how it started. I joined the band. and. Hi. Hi, it's okay. Hi. <laughs> so go on. So you're... that's how it started. So uh, at your wedding, they did really great, right? Oh yeah, they just it was just all cover tunes. Nice. And uh, I remember the first first song I ever played with Venice. They had me play on one song, and it was uh, the Eagles. Uh, Gonna be Eagles. a heartache tonight. Heartache tonight alone. Anyway, every time, time I hear that, I think that was the first song I ever did with them. Amazing. And then you guys... And then we started, yeah. you know, uh, just playing small clubs. We would play on the Sunset Strip. We played Gazaris. And, really? And Because uh, they had already been playing those clubs. Amazing. And it just started kind of getting a little bit more popular. We started getting more people listening. And, and uh, we started doing some recording about a few years later. Yeah. And uh, we were traveling across the United States back and forth, doing radio shows. We had yeah. we got signed by a label. Yeah. And then uh, oh. we got a Holland connection. Yeah. How'd 20, you get 20 that? years ago. Um, there was a, a Dutch, kind of like TV radio personality. Yeah. And he heard one of our albums. It was distributed there. Oh my gosh. And he goes, who the hell are these guys? I want, I want to bring them over. And wow. he had this really wonderful TV show called Two Meter Sessions. And it was two meters there is like six and a half feet. Uh -huh. And that, he was six and a half feet tall. Oh, Big, I can tall never Dutch figure guy. that out. And okay. so they called his show the, the Two Meter Sessions. Oh. And he invited us to come do that. Uh -huh. And we went there going, what are we doing going to Holland? This is That's really great, weird. That's great, though. What an experience. And the first week we ever went there, we did a live show. We thought no one's going to show up. We had like 250 people there. Woohoo! And we did a TV show, acoustic live. Uh, well, it was acoustic to, to tape. Uh -huh. And then it was, but it was live. Uh -huh. And and then played later. Right. Um, it was in front of like two million people or something because what? of his TV show, oh his my established God. TV show. And in Holland, Whoa. that's a huge audience. That is huge, and they loved you. They loved your yeah, music. Yeah, they really liked it, and they made an album out of it. We we started going back and getting more and more people at, at clubs until we were finally actually doing venues like theaters and things. You were, you know, uh -huh. thousand seaters. Wow. And. Um, he, he brought his whole crew here he did. to L.A. Uh -huh. And he did a whole, you know, another one of his shows on us. And they made an album out of both the soundtracks and it went gold there. What? Or went platinum there, gold? Well, I'm not platinum, sure. I think it is. Yeah. But uh, and it did really well. Oh, my um, gosh. And then you guys, you continued to go to the Netherlands yeah. always, right? Yeah, usually and like twice a year. Twice a year, and the people just love you. Like, I've heard that if you turn on the radio there, you'll hear nah, the Netherlands. 
I wish. You'll hear the Venice band. No, it's it, people exaggerate. I we do. we have a very loyal following there. So when we go yes. there, it's wonderful. I mean, we're doing, you know, ten to twenty shows. Yeah. And they're the the either clubs or venues are between four hundred and twelve. 1300 people that's you know. huge so that's pretty good but it could obviously be, be bigger and we do festivals where there's you know 12 15 sometimes 20,000 wow. which is really cool the festivals that are really is great really cool and of course you guys have done you've made like over 20 albums I don't even know how many albums we made 21 did you count them yeah you did yeah I was gonna say a dozen <laughs> really 21 oh my gosh yeah I, I don't know all the names of them, but... Nor do I. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a lot. I know, I know, I know. So uh, then we were fortunate... You actually got a prize there. You got the equivalent of the Grammy there. We did. We got the Edison Award, which was the best... Electrical work. No, best I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's funny they foreign call it the Edison. Best foreign band or something like that oh yeah and i know and we were up, up against i know you too yes and, i know uh, this and uh and Coldplay. Coldplay. yes and they and won, won. Woohoo! i think it was fixed oh who fixed it i don't know <laughs> who knows but we did play it we did play that night and they I'm gave us our awards with that they gave us our award that night we played live uh, tv Oh, you did? TV Live award TV. show. Yeah, it was cool. You know, there's something about you going to Amsterdam and staying there for a couple months out of the year that's very cool. Uh, I, yeah, it's great. I've got wonderful friends there that I've, you know, known them now for 21, 22 years. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. Um, now we're going to take a little switch here because I know you love music and you, of course, write much of your all of your music with Venice is original, most yeah. of it. I don't always write every song, but I do write a bit of it now, yeah. But, and you've had such a successful career in music, <clears throat> but you also well, have another passion. Kind of. oh, yes, you have. And you have another passion, and that is woodworking. Yeah. You know, how did that begin? Did you begin that as a child? I got a C in woodwork, in, in woodshop in <laughs> high school. See? And I still know my teacher. I just saw him last week. What? And, uh, Did you show him some of your you No, know, he ended up now? working for me about five years later. He worked uh, for you? Yeah, my my older... Okay, so two of my brothers and I started a furniture refinishing business. Right. Because my little brother, Billy, was working for a place in Venice called The Merchant of Venice. Oh, and yeah. he, he started refinishing furniture. And the three of us started this company, and it lasted about five years. Wow. We ended up having like 13 employees. But in the midst of all that and then working with stains and lacquers, which was the reason we got out of it, it's too much chemicals. Oh, I started really? doing a lot of the, a lot of the repairs oh, on furniture. Oh, right. And that's what I really enjoyed. You did? It was the actual working with the wood. Oh, you did. So I started building furniture. I, I, I learned how to frame homes and stuff just working on job sites. Yeah. But also uh, someone asked me to make some cabinets, you know, very primitive cabinets. And I started that and I enjoyed that a lot. Wow. So then I started making custom furniture. Really? And I've done that up until uh, up until Roger Waters. <laughs> yeah, well, well because in. really your music at the time, you that was like a part-time job for you, doing the furniture, right? Well, to both of them help were. It, they, it, make ends meet. Yes. Yeah, they were both. It, one would kind of steal from the other one, you know? Is this 422? Uh, 422 mm -hmm. is this way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so go on. So. so yeah, one was always robbing from the other. It seemed like. Yeah. Like whenever I got a real big job, for furniture, I'd have to go on the road for a month, or vice versa. I'd, you know, I'd have these. It just seemed like they were always colliding. Oh, and, uh, and it doing was tough. the music and the woodworking. Yeah, it was tough to make yeah. things work. But. Well, let me ask you this: How did you come to start making these wonderful mini surfboards, handcrafted, so made to scale? Close. That kind of started because of the music job I got doing working with Roger Waters. Oh. Because Roger Waters of Pink Floyd. That is correct. We in Venice were his background singers for his whole tour of the Wall from two thousand and ten 
through 2013. Whoa. And I was able to make enough money that when I came home, I don't really have to do a lot of woodworking to make ends meet. And yes, there comes the surfboards. Oh. I started you doing little... I saw some wood in my workshop that I went, yeah. oh, that's kind of shaped like a surfboard. Yeah. So I made it into a surfboard, and then I went, oh, God, I was off. I've probably made a 1,000 boards now. A 1,000? But I'm I don't so know, maybe impressed not that much, with your but work. I mean, you know, um, they're it's very amazing. authentic. You, you actually make replicas of, of famous surfboards. Yeah, yeah, I try. Yeah. And some are just artistic ones, too, like because I've got this really cool exotic wood. I'll put together a couple of woods together, and, and uh, it, it's pretty artistic. I, I just love doing it. I, I, I'm reminded of you and um, your friend Rolf. Uh, you went to the Netherlands. Well, you went to Norway, but you were asked to do a special surf, make a special surf. Oh, well, Rolf, Rolf has happened? family in Norway, yes. and he went up there and... and stayed at the world's northernmost surf shop and got to become really good friends with the people in the surf shop. Yeah. And um, so the next time he went to see them, I made a really cool board, like about a two and a half foot long surfboard that you'd hang on the wall. Beautiful. And I put an American flag inlaid out of wood, American flag and a Norwegian flag uh, into the board and it came out really great and oh, it, wow. it sits in that surf shop now which is I think really that cool that is the coolest thing ever all the way yeah. in Norway and the two flags together I, yeah. I hope I think we can get a picture of that um, I, maybe yeah Rolf probably Rolf has probably one Rolf probably has one and was he going to join in too? Just I don't chilling. think he wants to he's <laughs> chilling like a villain hi Rolf hey Rolf Hi, Rolf. We're talking about you. This is perfect. <laughs> I, I do have a couple. I do have some flags, though. The, the same flags. The Norwegian flag. Take a picture of them. Yeah. Oh, okay. We were wondering if you had a picture of that amazing Norwegian board, the bo surfboard that Pat made and you brought to Norway. The little one with the flags. Okay. Oh, sometime. You don't have to give it to us now. Thank you. Ralph, you know Mike? You've met Mike before. Uh, Mike, Ralph. So, yeah. Hi. My son, Mike, is the one who brings these podcasts to people's homes. Okay. And plays to... the whole White Album. Was yeah. it the White Album? Uh, it was, no, it was, it was <laughs> Abbey Road. Abbey Road. Oh, that was so, f excuse me. Oh. Fucking great. <laughs> oh, yay, Mike. Mike's also a musician and my son's. But anyway, Mike does, this is our commercial. Mike will, will bring a podcast to your house. If you want to host a podcast, he will bring all the equipment and make it happen for you. Just like he's making it happen for us right here. Right? For so, mom. You know, I think the wall benders, they have a group that they call the wall benders. <laughs> I think they need a podcast. <laughs> you know what? That's not a bad idea. We might. Would that be fun or what? <laughs> There's an area down at El Porto surfing <laughs> North Manhattan Beach there, and it's a park, long parking lot. And the southern end of the parking lot is an area where a whole bunch of us hang out. These guys have been doing it for 20 years. Hi. And there's a wall right there up against uh, some ice plant. Yeah. And it's, you know, just a little short wall. You can sit on it yeah. or lean against it. And so this lifeguard would see us every day just leaning up against the wall, checking out the waves. And he came by and he said, you guys are just bending that wall, the wall benders. <laughs> wow, so it kind of stuck. And uh, I made a plaque that I put onto the wall. Rolf started ordering T-shirts and hats. And now we got <laughs> you sweatshirts guys have a brand. and <laughs> patches. It's pretty cool. I totally want a T-shirt. Well, you need one. a hat. <laughs> I will get one for you and send it. Now... That's amazing. How many wall benders are there? Jeez. I don't know. I would say the core group is maybe eight, ten. Eight to ten. No, I would say saying. more than that. Really? really? Okay. When you think, yeah, but people that have sweatshirts and t-shirts, there's probably oh. 30 or... Oh, yeah, now it's growing into this huge movement. Yeah. The wall benders. 
But I yeah, want, there's a there's a lot. Yeah, it's fun. How fun! And you, gotta you guys come down. go. Don't you guys go on like electric bike trips and things? Yeah, there's about four of us that do that. And then you just like to go hang out and. That's when. Oh, did you? We wanted to see We're which house was Rolf. hers. Oh. You know, remember in uh, north of the pier, he took oh. a picture of it because we thought, is it still there as a small little house? I don't house? think it's still there. Oh, okay. I think they took it down and they built a huge. All right giant three-story right uh, you know building okay. like a condo or something because we crazy. there is one right there like the second or third one that's still the original little on house. the beach in santa yeah. monica and you know they have they've just torn down those houses sadly yeah there's a few but, left oh you know are we lucky i mean i was so lucky to grow up there yeah as i said i did want to ask you a question that my other son john was curious about hi john <laughs> he wanted to know when you were young what did you want to be when you grew up when you were young what were you thinking by the time like yeah what is young 10 well, yeah or, or 15 or <laughs> all of those i think as soon as the surfing bug hit me all i wanted to do was surf oh you wanted to be a surfer yeah but i you know I never really wanted to be much. <laughs> you didn't? I mean, you didn't no, like... I mean, well, I never I, thought of being a musician, really. Well, I thought you started your woodwork. You didn't think about being well, a I musician. Well, I did that because I needed to make money. So, although it was pretty passionate at first, it was also kind of hard to make money at it. You know, you're, I was independent. I didn't want to work for a big cabinet No. Maker. No, and then the the uh, singing, the music. I mean, I'm wondering, did you watch? You watched how hard your sisters worked, right? Did you see it as a lot of work, or how did you view that? I don't know. I the just, beautiful linen sisters. I just kind of grew up with it, so it was fun. I never huh? really thought of that as yeah. I I didn't really think of it much. Now I'm thinking of it quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> your your mom and dad were both singers, right? Uh, my dad was. But your dad and my your mom, mom was a dancer. But she could she could sing. She could sing. Her her mom was a dancer. Oh, I knew there was a dancer in there somewhere. She was from Mexico. Isn't that my wonderful? My mom's mom. Yeah. I heard the what the Lennon sisters do a Mexican song that was just amazing at the last uh, Lennon family concert. Do you remember? It was just gorgeous. Was that the, the one Kathy and I did? Yes. Yeah. Um, you were involved too, yes. Da, 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 da. Oh, gorgeous. Malaguena. Yes, Malaguena. Kathy and I, it was a solo kind of. Absolutely wonderful. Guitar and then Kathy singing. She's amazing. I mean, this guy can play the guitar. I don't know if you know that, but you've got to check out their music, Sometimes. the Venice Band. If you haven't ever, a lot of people may not know who you are but a lot of people sure do but oh check out venice so it yeah it's uh venice just venice, venice the band.com would be the website venice the band.com yeah okay cool well i am so happy to be here with you i'm I, i'm hoping <laughs> i didn't forget anything i had so much fun i'm just kind of well, you can call me later if you forget anything no <laughs> i'm so happy um I, I guess, did I ask you what was your first inspiration for making the little boards? Um, just that I saw a piece of wood in my shop and I went, oh my God, I could make that into a little surfboard. And as soon as I did it, I just felt like, that was well, actually fun. it was, it was about this big. It was about oh, yeah? 30 inches long or something. Yeah. And then for some reason I got into the little ones about 10 inches long and that just felt like something about it was a good artistically a good size yeah yeah and uh yeah so i started on those and then i started really looking into the designs of some of the older ones i started reproducing old hawaiian ones they're amazing um, 60s longboards a yeah. lot too yeah but now i do everything i do uh, people will come up and go can you make this board for me and they'll I have to take pictures of the board. Oh, yeah. It's really yeah. cool. I, I, it's so cool. I do my best to... Uh, and people have their favorite boards that they yeah. had, you know, great times with, and they want to remember that always. It's a it's a treasure. And, and so just so you know, we're going to take a tour after this podcast, and it will be filmed of all those boards in Pat's house, which is amazing. 
Yeah. Oh, you mean your surfboards? I just, you know, it's weird. I don't want to have a website. I don't want to be beholden to anyone. Come down to the beach at El Porto, and I'm there almost <laughs> every morning. I started selling them at Dive and Surf. And, uh, you did? Yeah, but when COVID hit, it just kind of... They took, oh. they took the whole display upstairs. They had to widen all of their aisles, and they had it in its own display case downstairs. And they ended up just putting the display case up in the offices. So, I don't know. Wow. Yeah, yeah I mean, if I really wanted to sell them... I would probably go on Etsy or make a website and do that whole deal, but I don't well, want to do it, it. it. It's your passion, so it's like it's not like you're ordered to do. You're making you're exactly. Taking, you're not taking orders. It would sure be nice to make the money from them. I mean, I, when I sell them, there, I sell them between 100 and 150 bucks. Yeah. Some more if it's the exotic wood and and exactly like someone wants me to make one, you know. They're so worth it. I love mine so much, but mine was free. It was a gift. Pat brought it to me at one of his concerts in a sock. <laughs> I wondered, what is this? <laughs> I still do that. I still do that. You do? Because I put them in a sock because it them saves them really nicely. It keeps them safe. But yeah. you will see them on the tour. And um, so I'm so happy that we got together. Me too. Thank you. This was so much fun. Yeah. So this is a song that I didn't know what it was called until, well, I'll explain that. I had a dog named Moppy, and we had her about eight years, I guess. And she ended up getting blind and deaf. And I would walk her around the neighborhood, even when she still was blind and deaf. And finally, she just was getting older and older. And I would just bring her out, and she'd just sit in the sidewalk in the sun um, three times a day. And I started playing guitar during mm -hmm. that whole time. So I'd sit out here, and I started getting to be better. And, and I started writing this song, and I thought, oh, this is a cool song. And then she passed away. We had to put her to sleep. And, of course, the day that she passed away, I thought, oh, well, the name of this is, is Moppy's song. She was a little Shih Tzu. She looked just like a mop head. And uh, so this is Moppy's song.